Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's discussion panel, Milt, Women, Feminism and Dairy. I'm Katrina Fox, and I'm the founder of Beavers, which is a global community for vegan women leaders. And we're delighted to present this special conversation featuring four incredible women in celebration of International Women's Month. Now, we're also celebrating Amy Taylor's amazing, powerful documentary, which is called Milt, which is a chilling expose of the New Zealand dairy industry. Now, if you haven't watched uh, Milk yet, um, good news is it's completely free to watch at the moment. It's on Water Bear. You have to sign up for an account on Water Bear, which is an uh, online streaming service, but it's absolutely free to watch. And obviously, highly recommend you do if you haven't already. Now, we're delighted to have the director, Amy Taylor, here today, all the way from New Zealand. And Amy is joined by Jackie Norman, former beef and dairy farmer, who's now with Vegan FTA, doing incredible animal activism work. Jessica Strathdee, who's the New Zealand founder of Mothers Against Dairy, and Jess is also a former dairy farm worker. And Nivy Jaswell, founder of the Viasa Foundation, whose Divinity Project is helping to decolonize the food system. Quick bit of housekeeping. We, the session we're aiming to run for about an hour, and we will leave time at the end for you to ask questions. So if you've got a question for the panelists or panelist, then type your question either into the chat or the Q&A function. If your question is directed to one person in particular, then just write their name. Um, and if not, obviously you don't need to do that. I'll be turning off my microphone and video very shortly, but I will be in the back end and the chat uh, collating questions and um, yeah, facilitating that at the end. So without further ado, I am delighted to hand over to your wonderful host, Jackie Norman. Thank you so much, Katrina. It's a pleasure to be here and welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us from wherever you are in the world. Uh, as Katrina said, I'm your host, Jackie Norman, and I am indeed a former uh, dairy and beef farmer. I have 18 uh, years of experience in the industry previously and I'm now a full-time animal rights activist. Today we are joined by an incredible group of female leaders looking to create systemic change within the dairy industry. Um, Katrina has already done a fantastic job of introducing them and as an activist myself I know that it takes a huge amount of courage and drive to speak out against an entire industry. These women are making amazing change around the world and I really look forward to having a wonderful talk about it so uh, we should get stuck into it. Amy firstly congratulations on a hugely powerful and visually outstanding documentary. Uh, I remember us talking at the start when you very first mentioned to me oh you know I'm going to make a documentary about it about the dairy industry. I had no idea of the sheer scale and your amazing talent. It, it really is a must-see film. I know it's been an enormous labor of love for you through some challenging times. And I, like many others, are really excited to see your efforts and in particular, your message getting out there to the world. With females of another species at the heart of the industry's exploitation, it seems only right that women are leading the way to change. Through Milk, you are sending a strong message to governments, farmers and individuals that dairy needs to change. But through comprehensive presentation of facts rather than aggressive judgment of farmers. I have to admit, as a vegan activist, uh, this was not what I was expecting. <laughs> and I'm sure the average farmer will get a surprise as well if they actually take the time to watch the movie. Uh, I know firsthand how incredibly daunting it can be speaking out against the so-called backbone of our country and you know there's no bigger way to do it than you have done here with Milt. Massive, massive respect to you. What was it that initially spurred you into starting this film um, in the first place and kept driving you to, to see it through to completion especially in such a challenging time? Yeah thank you. Um, basically I came across Chris's work um, sort of doing social media videos on the dairy industry and that got me you know, more interested to kind of look a bit further into what was going on. And then him and I had already worked on something together. So um, we decided to to kind of take it to a different level and do a feature length documentary. Um, and yeah, I didn't know the scale of that <laughs> when I started it either. It was definitely a bigger project and a lot more um, yeah, um, all consuming than I thought it would be. But what kept us going, I think, is just um, knowing that this information is very powerful and that people needed to be aware of it, you know, that we had to share 
you know, a sort of an overview of, of the industry um, and show that it's not working in any way at all because um, it keeps getting justified and that it's working for the economy or it's, you know, that farmers need to do it and all of that kind of thing. And, yeah, and the greenwashing that goes on. So we discovered along the way more and more that um, it was just failing in every way. So we we knew we had to kind of see it through and get it out there. It's absolutely mind-boggling the amount of research and I can't imagine you know, how long it must have taken you to collate all this, this information is absolutely staggering. And we know, you know, documentaries really do help create change. My husband, for example, went vegan after watching uh, What the Health. And so we know the power that documentaries have. Um, and Nivy has also created a documentary herself as well, which um, I'm really looking forward to seeing. I heard about that recently. So that would be great if we could get a link to that at some stage. So documentaries are hugely powerful. Um, you know, that I'm just yeah I'm blown away I really really hope that everybody gets a chance to watch it because it really does help to create change um Jess Jess I haven't seen you in a little while uh Jess is the reason I became an animal rights activist um because she is a very very strong lady and um doing incredible work here no film exposing Aotearoa New Zealand's dairy industry would be complete without the experience of people like you who have been there in the milking shed raising those calves and who have lived everyday life on the farm as a dairy, former dairy worker and now a passionate, passionate animal rights activist, your speeches have gone viral around the world by highlighting the paternal bond that both we humans and female bovines deeply share. Um, in fact, one of your viral speeches, um, hopefully Katrina can share the link to, I think you know it's a really impassioned speech and it is very inspiring. Um, with feminism, breaking many intersexual boundaries and often being an integral part in progressive movements, it would seem only logical to acknowledge the links here between the exploitation of females within the dairy industry. As a New Zealand founder of Mothers Against Dairy, can you elaborate on how dairy is very much a feminist issue and how can we help other women to make that connection? Thank you, Jackie. Yeah, absolutely. Um, feminism is so deeply... Um, aligned I feel with the cause of animal rights because just the sheer disrespect and exploitation to females bodies regardless of what species they are is gargantuan on this planet and the dairy industry I mean I feel like there's not an industry that's more obvious than enforced impregnation of cows making them carry a baby every single year, birth that baby, only to have that baby taken within 24 hours of them giving birth. And then unfortunately, most of those, well, all of those babies will end up with their throats slit at some point, whether it's immediately or a year or so down the line for to eat their body when they're grown a bit more for meat. Um, I, I don't feel like there is an industry that could be more um, aligned with feminism and what it means to be female and what it means to be a female mammal and to lactate and lactation is purely for uh, your offspring. So um, yeah, I just, I guess feminism is really so important to the story of dairy and why it's so inherently cruel. I don't think there is a bond on this planet greater than a mother and its child. And that's irrespective of species. So um, I think using uh, feminism to highlight how abhorrent the dairy industry is and how abusive and exploitative it is of females and their, and their babies, really. So I, I, I just think you can't, you can't talk about the dairy industry without talking about feminism. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, certainly as a, a fellow female, former dairy farmer, looking back on my time in the industry, something which deeply hurts me now is how this system was able to actually override my basic instincts to protect and nurture and indoctrinate it into the proliferation of, of abuse for profit. Um, I mean, I actually lost a child um, myself. I had a, a baby born and passed away during my time in the industry. And yet I was still so deeply indoctrinated, I didn't make the connection between 
what was happening to other females of, of another species. And without having experience on the farm, many would never imagine or get the chance to know how women are even used to exploit females of another species. Um, indeed, this is something I could only see myself once I got away from all of that conditioning, all of those years. And when I did, it made me both incredibly angry. Um, and it also really made me want to fall through the floor with shame. It still does, you know, to think what I was part of exploiting other females. Are you able to share with us your experience of realizing this and how wrong it is for the industry to be actively desensitizing women from female nature for profit? Yeah, um, and this is the uh, this is the reason Mothers Against Dairy actually came to fruition was because women in the dairy industry are being used by the industry to try and portray this very wholesome, healthy, functional kind of industry. And I'm seeing that more and more from the industry and their propaganda. They use women all the time to try and push this narrative that the that the dairy industry is this wholesome beautiful place to work and be in fact like as soon as I became aware of it I realized how prolific it was that they were using women to try and push the dairy agenda um for me personally I I completely understand what you're saying Jackie because when I first started on the dairy farm I wasn't a mum, but I was a woman in my 30s. And I remembered my very first milking season I stood in the dairy sheds milking the cows and I felt this overwhelming sense of feminism I felt like we were women working together like here I was and I was being able to touch this really intimate part of their bodies with the milking cups and I remembered feeling quite empowered by it um, and for me it wasn't until it was a few months later when the calving season started that it hit me like a ton of bricks how I'd been getting that milk a few months earlier when I went to the calf pens that morning and saw all these tiny, shattered, broken babies still covered in afterbirth, um, still with bloody navels, standing in the pens, just calling for their mums. And I realized, my God, these cows aren't machines with a tap that you turn on and off. These cows were mothers that birthed these babies. And that's how I was getting that milk because these babies should be getting this milk, not me in the milking cups. Um, and I understand what you were saying about being so like desensitized to it and still continuing with it because even though I was so sort of upset and disgusted by the realization of what I saw in the calf pens, um, I still continued to work. Uh, I still went through the whole season. We stayed living on the farm. Um, I knew inherently it was wrong. I knew it was deeply wrong, but I, at that point still felt like I was so suckered into the industry's propaganda of you're feeding the world and you're doing this great thing and these cows don't care and these these cows aren't um, good mothers and and all the garbage basically that the industry tries to push on you to think that it's it's good what you're doing like it's it's not bad it's actually actively really positive what you're doing um, but it was for me becoming a mum and sitting in my uh, living room and breastfeeding my very tiny, precious baby who was so dependent on me and looking out the window where the uh, maternity panic was, just a small paddock, and I had been listening to the, ba to the mothers birthing their babies overnight. I was watching them cleaning and loving and um, just being good mums to those babies. Um, and these are cows that have probably lost countless babies before, depending on how many, how old they were. Um, and here I am breastfeeding this little person and realizing how much they needed me. And then watching my partner come with the tractor and the cage and taking those newborns off their mum and seeing the absolute distress in the mums when they were taken. Um, and it just that's when the like just the blinders completely came off and I made the complete um, correlation then between my experience as a mum and their experience as a mum and going through the horrors of labour as well and I had seen them labour for sometimes hours on end to give birth to their babies um, that's when the breakthrough came for me when I became a mum myself and and just realised quite the horror of what we were inflicting on them. Absolutely. Yeah. And I'm so glad that you spoke out. I think I think it would probably be safe to say that you were probably the, the first 
um, former dairy farmer to really speak out publicly, um, as Myers just shared in the uh, chat. Um, you had a wonderful article uh, written in, in uh, New Zealand Women's Day, and that really grabbed my attention. And to give an example of, of some of the how deep our indoctrination was, it wasn't mm -hmm. until I went vegan that I realized these babies were crying out for their mothers. I raised mm -hmm. thousands of, of dairy and beef cows over the years, and I was told by men um, mm -hmm that you know the cows cried because they were hungry and so I learned that if I went into the pen to feed them you know they'd shut up and they did uh they had full bellies you know and so I it was years my you know I just could not believe it once I actually made that connection um and of course women make better calf rearers and all of that kind of stuff that we're indoctrinated with um but there's a whole other conversation uh Nivy, with um Milt being uh, the story of Aotearoa New Zealand, some may wish, wish to dismiss it. Um, and I know that, you know, it has been, uh, people are quick to jump to these conclusions that it is just a New Zealand issue. But as the recent Panorama investigation shown in the UK revealed, these incidents of exploitation, environmental degradation and sheer cruelty are not isolated events or exclusive to any particular nation. They are very much international and go wherever dairy is produced. Through your work for the Versa Foundation, you've uncovered, uncovered even, a staggering amount of information regarding the infiltration of the dairy industry in South Asia and in particular India. Having such an extensive insight into the reality of foreign dairy industries, and now with the addition of milk, do you feel the, that the film will create a point of leverage uh, for other nations in addressing their own industry and its harmful effects not just upon the animals but also the people and the planet? Um, that's a great question, Jackie, and I'll try to answer it in two parts. Um, one is the message and the medium, and the second is how can this film nudge the audience to consider their own country's dairy sectors? Um, so the first one, the message that animal-based dairy is unhealthy for humans, um, cruel towards the cows, buffaloes, other animals involved, uh, completely unnecessary for public planetary health, this message per se has been around for a very long time. Um, the plant-based and the vegan movement have only recently tapped in, in my opinion, into the powerful vehicle of storytelling through independently made films and exclusive platforms um, such as the International Vegan Film Festival. I mean, they didn't even exist until October, 2018. Um, I, I, I'm on their advisory board. I know they've been working tirelessly to ensure vegan films get the spotlight they deserve and that such platforms are built on the foundation of diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, well, well-made, well-researched vegan documentaries are hard to come by and kudos to Amy. You know, she's done a brilliant, um, you know, job researching, directing, producing the message in a very compelling way. And it's more than just storytelling. I mean, Amy, honestly, you've, what you've produced is an artifact of investigative journalism and taking on an industry that is so dangerously powerful. So, so congratulations. Um, I just feel that this film offers critical insight to audiences outside of New Zealand. And there's there are three points to consider. Um, number one, is there a universal message in this documentary? Yes, there is. Dairy is not fit for human consumption. Dairy cows and their families are victims of rape, separation, abuse, resulting in premature death by premeditated slaughter. That's what it is. Number two, is there a specific message for moms? Is there a specific message for ethnic minorities and communities of color in this documentary? Yes, there is. Um, both these audiences, um, as Jess has mentioned, you know, uh, you know, you've been talking about this as well. Um, both these audiences are carefully profiled and targeted by dairy advertising. Um, is there a lesson for media content creators, especially female creative professionals in other countries? Absolutely, there is. One of the key objectives of good content, whether it's film, whether it's research, is to inspire other filmmakers and researchers to investigate similar stories in their own backyard and to expose the linkages that help consumers see how this very brutal, very cruel, um, very anti-divine feminine um, global dairy complex really operates. So absolutely, I think there's a lot of insight here. There's a lot of, I see that, you know, a lot of mirroring that um, this film will offer to audiences in 
every part of the world, and especially ones that are the leading producers and consumers of um, dairy. And and dare I suggest, Amy, I, I think that, you know, uh, uh, let's get this documentary subtitled in Hindi. I mean, we really need to ensure... It is. You know, um, uh, dairy yeah. farmers and 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 in the dairy um, industry, uh, vast majority of them tend to be female, and especially in South Asia as well. You know, they're subsistence farmers. They don't have large dairy farms. They're really small dairy farmers, and um, they don't speak English for the most part. And and I think that for us to be able to reach them with with your powerful message, um, if we can get some subtitling happen and, you know, I'm very happy to discuss this offline as well. And I just wanted to put it out there. Yeah, we do have handy subtitles. Um, it should be up on Water Bear at the moment. So we've got a few different languages. Yeah, so we're gonna add more also as we go, but we do have, um, yeah, handy for now. Just what's needed. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. It will um, definitely make a huge difference. I, I know in an interview, uh, Nevi, you were saying that, you know, for to get the message across to to the people that you were wanting to learn and to target in, in India, you needed to make your own documentary. So this will be fantastic to be able to share this documentary as, as well with uh, with people of other cultures and still get that message across because, yeah, it's, it's not New Zealand's problem. It's everybody's problem. Um, and Amy, you know, the, the, our waterways here in clean green Aotearoa um, provide a narrative focal point and a brilliant example of how the production of dairy affects each and every one of us, regardless of whether we choose to consume it or not. Uh, for example, in the recent lead up to this panel, um, I believe it was Greenpeace and the New Zealand Cancer Society released a damning report as to how our drinking water is so contaminated with nitrate due to our intensive animal agriculture. Um, in large parts of the country, the poor quality and the proven risk to our health, um, which is showing in our cancer statistics, is actually in breach of basic human rights. Um, you know, vouching for this are actually large part, parts of, of the country that you know, I wouldn't even consider living due to the water quality. As someone who has seen firsthand and worked with many experts within this field, um, do you feel that this is an issue that we should be directing our environmental and other intersectional counterparts towards targeting to create a real collaborate effort to dismantling dairy? Yeah, I actually think that's happening already in terms of the support that we've had with the film. We've obviously had Greenpeace and SAFE, um, so animal rights, environment. Um, I feel like there's already that sort of collaborative approach um, where everyone really wants the same end result, which is, yeah, which is fantastic. And obviously, like everyone said before, it's not just here in this country, the same things are happening. Um, you know, in, in other countries, obviously, that has to, you know, they have to get those different organisations getting on board and um, making the biggest impact. Yeah, and, and hopefully this film will be a good resource for doing that. Definitely. I love how Milk covers all bases. You know, you really, it is such a comprehensive, um, as Nibby said, it's, it's a resource, you know, it really is. Um, I was lucky enough to, to get a, a preview. Uh, if you haven't seen it yet, Jessica makes a, a great appearance in it and there's even little of me in there <laughs> at some stage. But, I, you know, I love how it covers all bases. And uh, when I watched the preview, um, I got another family to watch it with. Um, it was a mum and dad, two teenagers, you know, that, that had been in doctrine that you know strong bones were needed in their growing children and all of this and I could see there was you know there was a, a, a mum a dad a teenage son and a teenage daughter and it, the, the film resonated with each and every one of them uh, you know whether it was on an environmental aspect or this just the sheer size of the industry there was obviously the animal welfare, welfare issues I was just looking at them and their reactions and every single one of them just went whoa or you know what the it, it's just mind-blowing you know for for New Zealanders as well as around the world and what do you know the next day um and ever since there has been no dairy in their fridge it has all been you know replaced with, uh, with plant alternatives so <laughs> you know there's a <laughs> one one family mm. right there fully converted so um Nivy, mm. so far this panel has addressed only a handful of issues brought about by the dairy industry but these alone are shocking enough with your extensive background in consumer behavioral marketing do you feel the issues in the film raises and the extended discussion we're having here today um having the potential to really shift the average consumer's choice just like i was saying with with my friends or um where else do you feel the best places to apply pressure in order to further that behavioral change yeah i mean behavior change is difficult right um but then 
it, there are some critical prerequisites for behavior change to happen. Um, receptivity, which is openness to the message is one. Um, cognitive dissonance, which then motivates the individual to self-assess their long held opinions about certain products, foods, behaviors, rituals that make up their value system and cultural context. That's another one. Um, I think Milked um, as a documentary has come out at a really opportune time. We know the pandemic has created greater receptivity to messages on health, nutrition, immunity, and hygiene. Um, there are extreme climate events th that have created oh. a sense of urgency to find solutions. Um, we know there is geopolitical upheaval in certain parts of the world at this point. There is ideological divisiveness, greater mistrust in big government, big business. Um, whenever there is chaos, we as humans, we strive to make a greater sense of our own worlds. And, and this is a necessary emotional imperative to achieve some semblance of balance. And at a time of great disruption, I feel films that like Milk are a key drop in the ocean of all the messaging out there that consumers are increasingly exposed to. Um, and this is the right moment for planting those seeds of cognitive dissonance and have audiences explore for themselves the white lives, the lies, that they've been told in plain sight for generations on end. Um, I truly believe, um, Jackie, that this documentary has the power to shift narratives and, and generate that much needed curiosity about different ways in which the dairy industry works right from their supply chain, which is treatment of the cows as an asset and not as you know, sentient beings mm -hmm. to debilitating indebtedness of dairy farmers and also clarifying that vegans are not about this militant, aggressive, um, you know, way of attacking dairy farmers, but really sort of um, in a really empathetic way, revealing what people who work in the industry at the grassroots level really go through um, and, and to consumer misdirection through advertising tactics, you know, that range from preying upon a mother's or a parent's desire to provide the most nutritious food um, to her children to in places like India, where dairy ads paint their products with religion and mythology. I, I can't even tell you more, you know, what is more sinister. Um, the best place to trigger behavior change is to offer consumers the real story and let them decide for themselves. And I think that Amy's work does exactly that. Absolutely. It, it really does. And like you say, it's, it's non-judgmental. It's non-aggressive. It just does a fantastic job of presenting the facts. And there are a lot of facts and saying, you know, laying it all out. These are the problems. This is everybody's problem. And it's about finding the solutions. Um, you know, how, how do we change this? How do we do it together? And how do we do it by supporting farmers to, to encourage them to make change, not by pointing the finger? Um, you know, it's, it's wonderful. It's very refreshing. I know, you know, a lot of people have, have not um, expected this approach who are not vegan um, and have found it really refreshing and very, um, yeah, just, just really approachable and well done manner. And it is right up there with the what the health, the cow spiracies, the sea spiracies when it comes to quality, when it comes to information and scale. I mean, you've just absolutely knocked it out of the park, Amy, as you know. It's, it's just wonderful. Um, as a fellow colleague, friend in New oh, Zealand, Amy, you. I'm sure I can speak for many when, you know, I can say we're so proud to see the successful launch of Milk on Water Bear Media. And, you know, already the impressive number of accolades that the film has already received. I'd love to know what is next for Milt? Um, I know you had a complete nightmare with having so much amazing footage that you could only fit into, you know, <laughs> one feature length documentary. We understand this is the only the first step in the campaign to halt New Zealand's greatest failing. Yeah, we have quite a lot um, planned still, so the work has not ended. <laughs> um, we um, The next big thing is that we have the film releasing on Plant Based News YouTube channel, which will really help. That's this weekend, so that's going to really help sort of get a wider audience because not everyone wants to log into a new platform like Waterbeer, so at least YouTube will make it more easily available. Um, we also, we've launched a petition on change.org, which is to reduce the global dairy herd by 25% by 2025. So we've got this um, petition that Plant-Based News are helping us with also. Um, 
basically we just want to draw attention to the issues of the dairy industry in that petition and you know the, the idea is that we we need to present it um at the next cop um conference so that Yes. You know, we basically are saying we are doing our part um, for the Global Methane Pledge, which, uh, you know, New Zealand so far are ignoring the fact that they've signed on to this thing to reduce the methane and, you know, 100 other countries, same thing happening. So anyway, we've got the petition, we've got educational material coming out for schools, well, for universities primarily, um, looking at doing a one-hour TV cut of the film so that that can go on TV channels, so 52 minutes. Um, and we're lobbying government to remove dairy from schools and from the nutrition guidelines. And we're looking at doing a short film following a farmer transitioning, but have to find that person still. Yeah, so a few things. That's probably just um, off the top of my head stuff. But yeah, we would also like to do a parliamentary screening as well. Um, yeah, definitely here, but in other countries too. So yeah, that would be fantastic. We all know the uh, the challenges with uh, calling out our esteemed political leaders in our various <laughs> countries and getting them to uh, to take action and help in creating that change. It is so desperately needed. Very exciting. I know when you yeah. thought that milk was finished, you thought you were done and dusted, didn't you? But it seems like <laughs> yeah. you had a lot more work to it's do. It's never going to end. The wait. whole thing was meant to be like one year project to start with. That's kind of what you know the plan was. But then obviously COVID and you know everything else that happens with feature filmmaking it's pretty it's pretty huge <laughs> so definitely and it's to be at this point where it, it's out in the world yeah. fantastic and I hope with all my heart I'm sure it will that it really gets out there to as many people as possible and and helps you know it's, it's a game changer and there's no doubt about it I do have one more question um, that I wasn't planning on but I can't resist asking uh, it, it's kind of targeted towards Jess but I, I love all your perspective on it so I just wrote it down yesterday um, so even when I was in the industry as a female and I believe that my cows were happy because I was gentler with them than other farmers there was still there was never a day that went past in 18 years that I did not feel sorry for these for these cows you know I would look into their faces look into their eyes and I would see the most downtrodden beings I had ever encountered just born and bred into a daily existence it was no life a daily existence of drudgery as someone who's lived this uh, firsthand Jess but but also to all of you you know what do you have to say to people who believe that life is better here in New Zealand for cows you know where they're grass-fed they all get to live outside we've got the whole green washing clean green image the whole humane lie what do you have to say to to those people um one thing that I was really lucky to experience on the farm was how intelligent and inquisitive and caring and beautiful cows are just by nature. Uh, they're, they're still hierarchical in the herd. They still have a lot of social stuff going on, just like humans. But um, I would walk around the farm and realize that these deeply sensitive, intelligent creatures were trapped in a small square. And if they weren't trapped in the small square or rectangular paddock, then all they were doing was walking to the dairy shed and back. And that, that was it for their lives. That's and it. on the news, especially, or in the media, we like to see cows in these big open paddocks and they have like interesting terrain and stuff on the, on the, um, on the ads. But that is so not the case from what I saw on an intensive farm. Cows are generally strip grazed. So even mm. if the paddock looks big, they're actually in a very small part of it. And they're in a small part that's being with wires um, kept in that small part so that they eat the grass right down because every grain, like every blade of grass is important on the farm because it's really important for their production that they're eating um, everything. Uh, that's why they're trying to get stock numbers as high as they can. So they have to make sure they utilize every blade of grass. Um, and that grass is being weed on, it's being pooped on, it's covered in nitrates. Um, and I just realized what a prison they were living mm. in. Um, and it just used to, and this was before I even became vegan or became a mum. I just saw their big overblown udders and their skinny wee hips and their, oh, their ribs sticking out and their, their hip bones sticking out. And um, 
all of their production was going into their milk. And I just, as you said, it's just an existence. And mm. also cows hate, hate the rain. They hate mm-hmm. the rain. And when it, was, when it would rain, we'd be like, sweet, because we knew that the cows would want to come onto the platform really easily because they'd want to get out of the weather. Um, so as, as dairy farm workers, that was like a good thing for us. But the reality was that they were standing out there in the yard for potentially up to three hours on concrete, squeezed in together, potentially twice a day, waiting to get onto the platform. Um, because they... and. The weather is really extreme in New Zealand. We know mm. that. We were on a farm that was 400 metres above sea level. Uh, snow, we get sometimes up to like a metre's worth of snow. Um, sometimes they would be birthing in those like terrible, mm. terrible weather conditions. Um, I just saw really sad, bored, hungry beings and uh Andrew McKnight who is a veterinarian told me and this is really broke my heart at the time he said it is impossible to satiate or fill a dairy cow she is always in a perpetual state of hunger because you cannot feed her enough for the volume of milk that she's having to make Mm -hmm. and that just broke my heart to think that they're out there pregnant again still that's why the heads are down and eating the whole time because they mm. cannot be filled because of the and sheer volume of milk that they're producing um it's exactly what you said Jackie it's not um it's not cre- like clean green beautiful existence for these cows it's just merely a, li- a lifetime of drudgery it really is. And uh, it made me think actually when you were saying before about in the early days how you were em- empowered as a, as a woman working in the industry. Um, and and I, was, I also felt very proud of that. You know, I was doing a man's job. I was holding my own. You know, I was involved in yeah. every day-to-day part of, of running the farm. And, yeah. you know, um, I, I mean, at, at that stage, I was able to milk 220 cows by myself. And I was very proud of that. And it's only now I look back and I'm like, what the hell is wrong with the system? What is wrong with the world that a little five foot nothing thing like me can be in complete and utter control of 220 huge animals? You know, there, there's something wrong somewhere. Um, Nivi, I'd, I'd love your perspective as someone who has delved deep into the, the history of the dairy industry in, uh, in Asia. Well, I, I think that, you know, um, there is a big power distance between people and the dairy sector. And that power distance is created by the packaging environment, the retail environment, the advertising environment. So it's the media determinants of perception that we're surrounded by. Um, Unless somebody has a firsthand experience of the dairy industry, such as the the, the kinds that, you know, all all three of you have. And, you know, frankly, I don't. And and I um, I did not go to a dairy farm or I didn't need to visit a dairy farmer to understand what was really going on in their world and, and in the cow's world um, until I turned plant-based and, and I turned uh, vegan. Um, and, and so that power distance exists. And there is not a single human being on the planet until, unless they're you know, clinically in a different space um, who will say, I'm not compassionate. And and the true test of their compassion is for them to really step out of that artifice, that artificial environment in which we as consumers interact with dairy products and and the dairy industry and and to, you know, take your family, take your children to a real dairy farm, wherever you might be, whether you're in India or you're in New Zealand or you're in the United States. I mean, there are ag gag laws and, you know, people won't let you even in because you know, what happens behind doors on those big CAFOs is completely horrendous. Um, but even if, you know, if there are organizations that want to put a front and, and say, oh, come, come over, see the happy cows and whatever, do yourselves a favor, go and visit those dairy farms and, and go there not to be brainwashed or greenwashed with everything that they're going to tell you, but just go there with an open mind to, to just see and compare those mammals with the mammals you treat as family members at home. You know, compare them with your cats and dogs. Compare them with your children, yourself, you know, as a woman, as a mom, as a sister, as a wife, you know. And and when you put yourself in those shoes, uh, you might walk away with greater information and a lesser distance and and therefore a better appreciation of what really happens on these farms. So my message is, um, if you really choose to call yourself compassionate, then get off the couch and get off that, you know, uh, the the supermarket where you 
pick that packaging that says A1 milk or A2 milk and all of that hogwash that exists, um, go directly to the source and understand where your milk really comes from. And I just wanted to also say that there is a gender gap in appreciation and understanding of the dairy sector. Um, when I turned vegan and I started to talk to women, they were they were pretty non-vegan women who are you know now vegan, they were pretty you know, quick to make that connection and connect the dots between, hey, the cow is a mom. The cow is not just an animal that gives food. The, the challenge that I experienced, not shockingly, but very disappointingly with men um, was, oh, cows give milk, period. A lot of them, at least majority of them, don't even realize that cows need to be pregnant and lactating to be able to give milk. And, and that's when the penny dropped on them so so there is a critical you know need for us to continue to bridge that gender gap in education and understanding of what the dairy industry really stands for so i would just say get off that couch you know um if you're on vacation or whatever you know in beautiful new zealand go go check out a real dairy farm and educate yourself or in beautiful india and go check out what those um dairy farms and cooperatives, et cetera, look like. Um, and you might be in for a surprise. Absolutely. And for anyone, uh, as I mentioned, you know, Nivi has, has done extensive research into the dairy industry in uh, in Asia, in South Asia and in, in India, and it's absolutely fascinating. Katrina, I think we have a, a link to a interview that uh, Nivi did with Chef AJ. It is an absolutely fascinating watch. Um, I would recommend everybody to watch that as well. Um, we should probably hand over to some questions because I can keep talking to you wonderful ladies all day. Thank you so much, Amy, for your amazing film. If you haven't seen it yet, please go and watch it on water bear or watch it on plant-based news sign the petition and let's support us um amazing amazing achievement however we can over to you katrina hello oh my gosh what an incredible fascinating brilliant rousing uh conversation seriously when we put this out um as the recording we all need to tag jacinta arden to make sure she sees this um it's yeah incredible thank you all so much we've got some really great questions so i'm going to get straight into it so we can get as many of those uh covered now um adam asked a really important question i think um and it's um to amy how was your film milk received by the maori population i think that's quite an interesting one um because often you know there's you know, certain white, it can be seen, you know, when white activists are kind of pushing a message and it doesn't always resonate with indigenous people. So um, I'm curious, Amy, um, how has milk been received by uh, the Maori population in New Zealand? Yeah, sorry about my internet. It's been really unstable. So I think I got your question there. How has it been received by the Maori population? Yeah. Um, to be honest, it's only just come out, so we haven't had a lot of um, feedback still. So we're, we're it's kind of early days. We don't really know. I'd say Chris would be one to answer that question a lot better than I would. He's a lot more um, connected in, I guess, and so yeah, he would know. But I think I think people appreciate that we are telling a story that you know is about the indigenous culture of this country and that you know we're really kind of showing how ridiculous it is that we have this industry dominating this country that that's not good for people it's not good for the land it's not good for the animals I think people are realizing you know no matter what culture you're from you can kind of see how ridiculous it is that we're that we're doing this so yeah Definitely. I really enjoyed Chris's insight um, in, in the documentary as well into, you know, um, the effect on, on his people and into the effects it's had on, on um, the Maori culture as well. So I, I think it was really important and, and really glad that you had that in there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's so essential. It's a great way to open doors and conversations um, in, in the Maori culture as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, Paige is asking, how do you suggest we encourage dairy farmers, consumers and teachers to watch this? Whoever, who would like to um, take that one? Yeah, I, I'm not sure if I should answer that one, but basically we are working on educational um, materials so that it'll be easier for teachers to, you know, we're going to break the film into sort of um, chapters, I guess, and also have educational resources to go along with, with that. So, um, 
yeah, once once we get all that done, then we can start trying to get it into the schools. But yeah, there's always that pushback. We're definitely dealing with a lot of pushback, like mainstream media are ignoring us so far. Um, you know, I just noticed someone ask about politicians. You know, it's been very, um, it's disappointing to see that there isn't enough engagement in the mainstream mm. sort of arena yet. Hopefully that will change once we keep pushing it. Jackie um, and or, Je- and or Jess, <clears throat> any thoughts on yourselves as former dairy farm workers <clears throat> on how to engage farmers um, as well as other, other stakeholders? Um, well, I hate to say it, dairy farmers are very busy. <laughs> They're very, very busy. Um, uh, I'm not sure I have an answer for that other than trying to get them on the down season before calving starts, uh, which is coming up sort of like midwinter. Um, oh, I, it's a really hard uh, industry to penetrate with any information that's contrary to what uh, they are being told by their sort of higher up, their, their bosses and the, uh, the milk people that they're supplying, like Fonterra or Sinlay. Um, I'm not sure. Jackie, what do you think? I, I don't know what the answer is to that. It's a tough one, isn't it? I mean, I would certainly yeah. encourage, you know, I've, I've seen on uh, social media, you know, farmers are sort of saying, well, we don't need to watch this because we know it's all, you know, it's rubbish anyway. It's it's all this, you know, wrong facts and, and you know, farming isn't like this. And there's Jess and I going, hello, uh, you know, <laughs> 18 years, you know, come on. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's we, we've got to, like I said, in, in, in the documentary, Amy's got all bases covered. And, and I would say, you know, hopefully at the end of the day, when you come home from the shed, you know, farmers are, can still loll upon the couch like we used to turn on the tv and watch milk put the challenge out there to actually watch it before you disagree with it or write it off you know because already those barriers are up and and this is not what milk is about it's not about pointing the finger at farmers and saying that you're bad people or that you're doing everything wrong it's saying that we have all been hugely manipulated by this massive industry not just animals but but humans male and female um and, you know, a lot of us, we don't know what we're doing. When I was in the industry, I didn't know what I was doing. When Jess was in the industry, you know, we had little wheels turning going, well, bits of this that we don't really like, but you get told, well, this is how it's got to be because this is, you know, cows make milk and this is how we keep the whole, you know, system going. Um, and I really think that if 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 more people like, like Jess and, and whether, you know, farmers, male and female, if we really had those conversations and really actually sat down and said, this is what we're doing, this is what is happening to animals, really think about it and allow that penny to drop I think there would be a lot more transitions and this is what Amy's been trying to do with with milk as well um you know she's showing the issues and she's showing the solutions and the willingness that there is with people outside the industry to work with those with the industry and help and support them to transition and, and help create change um because this affects each and every one of us so you know I'm, that, that would be my short term answer just watch milk if you're a farmer just watch milk first before you go judging it you know and if you're not a farmer and you watch it and you enjoy it please share it because it needs to get out to as many people as possible I hope that answers in some way. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I saw, I know Jane's here, Jane Belez Mitchell. Hi, Jane, um, who's saying, who's worked in broadcast mainstream journalism for decades. So uh, in the US, and so she knows, as we all know, that the dairy industry, uh, mainstream TV, you know, is bought and paid for by ads from animal agriculture, dairy industry, big pharma, or all of this. So it is, you know, quite tricky to counter that. Um, I can see that some people are sharing a link um, and we'll share this. um, um, I'll I'll send everyone who's signed up um, an email to request um, that Netflix show the film because I think it's great that it's on these channels Mm. like Plant Based News and Water Bear. I always want to say Watch Bear, (laughs) Water Bear. Um, But it will obviously be great to get it on a mainstream channel because that's when mainstream media um, do often show an interest like they did with Cowspiracy and Seaspiracy and Game Changers. And obviously we've got to remember Amy's film has only just come out, I think on the 18th of March, so just a few days ago, it was released on Water Bear. (laughs) And and it's you know coming out this weekend on Plant Based News uh, YouTube channel. So I think we're still in the early stages of promo. So I think for everyone, obviously, share as much as possible um, on all the social medias. Really let people know about it because often if media see that there's a lot happening on social, they might you know do something on it. Um, it's interesting. Roxanne has put something here about perhaps contacting milk alternative companies like Oatly, uh, Silk, etc., to see whether they 
might promote like so that's kind of a win-win to help them promote mm-hmm. their their products I don't know Amy do you want to tell us about any yeah, kind so, of I know you've touched on some of the plans you've got yeah. do you want to just briefly share those um so basically with the distribution we did approach Netflix like in every way possible um it's a really hard time to get independent documentary onto Netflix like it's different to how it was when Cowspiracy came out Netflix was in uh sorry Seaspiracy was a Netflix original so that's what they're going for now they don't really want these um independent documentaries so much Keegan Coon who's the co-director of Cowspiracy who's our executive producer or one of our executive producers he is struggling to get his other films onto Netflix now so it's just a super hard time it's really unfortunate because we obviously need these films on channels like that more than ever but um unfortunately they're 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 making it hard um we did approach well I did approach Oatly and even some of the New Zealand brands like plant-based um people are too scared to be aligned with something I think that they support what we're doing but they're too scared to be aligned to something that might turn off some of their flexitarian um, customers, I guess. So it's been quite, it's been quite, I mean, we did expect pushback, but it is a little bit disappointing to see that much pushback, even within the plant-based community. Yeah. yeah. But, you know, yeah. we're, we're going to keep going and it has only just come out and who knows what might happen. Um, I'm sure the YouTube um, release will definitely help spread the, you know, the audience because it's just so easy for people to, to watch on there and people to share it from there so yeah we're hopeful that that will get some traction for sure for sure um Maya is asking has there been any interaction or response from politicians in New Zealand I think uh, not including New Zealand greenies Chloe Swarbick or Gareth Hughes any and yeah any response so far and again I know it's, it's still quite new but any response uh, from politicians yeah. do you have any kind of targeted outreach are you planning to contact them as I say we will tag Jacinda Arden when this comes out because yeah she has to watch this film and I don't see how she can uh, you know watch this film and watch the discussion <laughs> um yeah, so but yeah what, what are your thoughts she's there, also Amy? a mother yeah, now she's wasn't. a mother now exactly yes yeah, yeah right. hopefully right. she will. and she's from Morrinsville which is like one of the biggest dairy farm areas in the country and you know so that's an interesting one because she's got kind of ties to the industry through friends and family no doubt um but yeah we have so Susie oh, you've just frozen Amy hopefully Amy will come back I think she was about to say Susie I'm frozen can, can you oh, still yeah. hear me uh yeah just start your sentence again Amy you said I think oh, you're about it, to say oh, you've yeah, got, got Susie Cameron <laughs> hey, I think you said that that's where we heard you up to Sure, I thought everyone was quite still there for a moment, but it was just my internet. Um, yeah, so Susie, our executive producer, has approached James, uh, James Shaw from the Green Party, and we're looking at doing a parliamentary screening. Um, but other than that, nothing yet. Um, I did contact the uh, scientific officer for the Prime Minister also, because she used to work for Fonterra. Um, and so she's aware of this sort of agricultural disruption also that's coming. So um, I think that angle is really important to kind of come in on and and make people aware that it doesn't matter what you think of the industry it's all going to be affected in the next decade or so by precision fermentation dairy and um, the fact is that we need to be making everyone aware of that and yeah I'm super interested to see what she thinks of the film so I'll chase that up with her soon. Fantastic. Yeah. And I can see Jane has mentioned, as I know, I think you two have already connected about Unchained TV, which is, yeah, fast growing women run network, streaming network, just hit 350,000 downloads on Amazon Fire Stick around the world. Congratulations, Jane. So, yeah, I think there's um, there's obviously lots of platforms. And I can see as well, Amy, we'll, we'll I'll send you the, the chat afterwards. There's people wanting, I know Lucia is here, who's got a vegan TV show. She wants to interview you. I can see there's, there's opportunities Um happening uh, already in the chat which I think is great but obviously when we share on our socials and I know Renee who's uh, got a digital agency she's mentioning taking and you've probably already got this organized Amy taking snippets and putting them on TikTok to engage that younger audience um, because obviously you know even though 
you know, we've probably got a lot of vegan friends or a lot of our audience might be vegan, but we've also got people that are not. And when we put this kind of stuff on these channels and share on social, as I mentioned earlier, that can really kind of help to get people chatting about it. And when media, when mainstream media do see a lot of buzz about things on social, um, you know, they will sometimes, um, you know, get on board. And I guess the other thing I think somebody mentioned was celebrities. Obviously, is any particularly any New Zealand celebrities um, that would yeah be willing to, to come on board? Yeah, it's it's been interesting because we we have reached out to a whole bunch of vegan celebrities. You know, Mike McRoberts and TJ, um, the All Black. Can't remember his last name now, but COVID Penny, brain. Penny. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and um, and so we've reached out to a whole bunch of people. Um, Mariama Kamo, I think, from Sunday show, tried to get Sunday to do a story about it. So we have been, you know, exhausting every avenue to kind of get some more media attention on the film. But, yeah, it's, it's just interesting. I mean, obviously, there's been a lot going on in the world, so it's quite a hard time to be trying to push something like this. But it also is, like, you know, one of the biggest things happening in this country. You know, has the biggest impact. It's only going to get worse in the in the future, so we need to be dealing with it now. So, For yeah, sure. we are. We're so reaching out, to, out of New Zealand. Yeah, and we've just had Moby come on board as an executive producer. Oh. Um, so you know, we we have kind of reached out to anyone and everyone to sort of back the film and help amplify the message of the film. But um, you know, we just have to hope that it just keeps growing. Yeah, absolutely. I can see someone's title. Oh, Mitali's put in, yes, absolutely. Deborah Meaden, uh, uh, his uh, on Dragon's Den, which is the UK equivalent of Shark Tank. Um, she went plant based um, a couple of years ago. And yeah, she recently partnered with uh, Peter on um, turning dairy farms into plant based milk producers and she's quite full on I love Dragon's Den I watch it and she's quite full on like she won't taste products that are given to her if you know she's so I'm plant-based so she might be good to tag she'll often do retweets anyway I'm sure there's like a whole kind of marketing mm, awesome. and PR campaign uh, that needs to be done yeah. but um, it, you know it's incredible I mean it's off to yeah a great start I can see Trist uh, Sky sorry has mentioned the Animal Justice Party Australia will support this I'm sure so I think it's it's a case of just really galvanizing it um, and I think that's going to start to happen so we are coming up on the the hour um so i just want to thank every one of the panelists jessica nibby jackie amy uh, for a really powerful important insightful discussion um on the dairy industry feminism um and women and just on a personal note, this is what turned me vegan when i first found out about veganism i was part of the feminist movement and veganism just kind of you know went over the top of my head and when i actually found out by a lovely activist who told me about the realities in the dairy industry i was shocked and i felt terribly guilty i thought how can i have been involved in the feminist movement going to all these consciousness raising movements and here, you know, we don't hear about this. I, you know, was taken in by uh, everyone about the, the propaganda. So, you know, I've been kind of, you know, babbling on about this for, for quite some time. And, you know, it's frustrating. We're still having to have the, the conversations. But I think with tools, as Nibby said, you know, milk is actually a, a tool and a, a resource, you know, not just, just a documentary. It's much more than that. Um, I think hopefully we can get more conversations going and more women in the dairy industry to you know, experience what, what Jessica did. And, and thank you for sharing your your experiences and, and your story and Jackie as well, you know, very poignant and moving stories and to get them to relate and to, yeah, I just had to wake up. Um, so really appreciate all of you. Um, again, Amy, congratulations on your film. 